Hello and welcome to today's episode that deals with writing for radio and production method. I am Sakshi Mandwal and the subject expert today is Renu Agal who has worked as a radio broadcaster for 15 years in the BBC World Service and is now an independent journalist associated with publishing industry. Radio has evolved from its early wireless days to become a universal medium of communication. It brings the world to people who can't read and keeps those who can't see in touch with the world. Armies to amateurs, taxis to mobiles, you see radio everywhere. So, in a sense, this is a medium of communication which has lost its awe but not its utility. But in a competitive marketplace with a cross-section of media, radio has to work to its strength. The effectiveness of radio is in making words as visual as possible. So, the first step is to reach your audience. In today's episode, we will discuss the following. Learning to write for the radio. Essentials of a good radio script. How radio is different from other media. The role of presentation that makes a success of radio writing. The role of production in radio programming. What should be done and what should not be done. The aim of radio is to communicate with its audience. So, when you are on air, you have to think about how to speak to the listener, structure of your text, wording, style choices and how would you create images in the mind of your listeners. We love radio when we feel that as listeners we are being spoken to. If the presenter speaks in our language or the language that we daily use to communicate, we feel closer to the program. It may sound very easy, but most of us are used to a certain written style. However, written language differs a lot from spoken language. A radio program that sounds spontaneous radio is actually something which takes a lot of preparation. Most radio texts are well prepared so that accuracy is maintained and on-air time is not filled unnecessarily. The moment an audience hears something they need to understand it, the speed of the speaker decides how quickly the audience has to grasp what is being said. Unlike the printed word, with the oral word, the listener has no visual aids like paragraphs, headings and subheadings. You can't even turn back the page or reread the paragraph like in a newspaper. So, a good radio text needs to be in simple language and has to be logically composed. For a radio script, complicated sentences just don't work and so subordinated clauses create problems. So, a simple thumb rule to follow is one thought in one sentence and just one subordinate clause at the most. So, before writing your radio script, ask yourself, what is it that you have that is essential information? Hello, friends. Too much information, images, facts and multiplicity of thoughts only confuse listeners. Don't try to put all the extra information you have which you think is interesting as it can distract the audience. So, remember all those things that you put in bracket or as subordinate clauses in a newspaper script has to be cut out in radio. So, a radio writer has to make a choice of what he wants to keep and what needs to be left aside. Let us look at what is the easiest way to select and deselect what you need. Who is speaking or doing something? What is happening? Where is it happening? 
why is it happening, when is it happening and how is it happening. Apart from this, the structure of the radio text has to be very simple and it has to be communicated to the audience orally. The introduction thus becomes the headline which tells the listener what the story is all about. And in the text that follows, all their ideas be in a logical order that is well connected to each other. If the text is long, then just as in print, we use subheadings. On radio, we make use of pauses, change in voice or tone of voice and music. Whether a listener will stay with you or not is very much decided by your first sentence. If you want your listeners to stay tuned, you need to create an interest. You need to arouse their curiosity right at the beginning. So, please spend some time thinking of what your opening lines are going to be. If it is news, then you need to start with the most important news point and then follow up with the other information that will add to it. For other yawners of radio, you can deal with the opening more creatively. You can be playful, create an atmosphere, create suspense. But in your excitement, please don't keep the suspense for so long that the listener switches off. What's happening now and here should get preference over chronological structures. In radio, one does not have the luxury of going back to what has been said. So, one good way is to occasionally remind listeners what they are listening to by repeating the main themes and the topic under discussion. It also helps those who have tuned in late into a program to know what the program is all about. For example, it helps to have small recaps of points of discussions or a presenter mentioning the theme of discussion or a little jingle which asks audiences to share their opinions on that particular theme. By doing this, you repeat the topic of the program without sounding repetitive. Texts on the radio are solely supported by oral language. Contrasted to television texts or newspaper texts or conversations in person, there is no visual aid for what is being said. You have no pictures or for that matter, no facial expression or gestures to support what you are saying. All you have is vocal expressions to support your content. So, if you want your listener to see in his mind's eye what you are saying, the language has to be concrete. It has to describe closely what is being said and evoke those images. Describe people, objects and situations as precisely as you can so that the listener can imagine them. If you have to describe something accurately, you need to observe it keenly and also need to have good research. It is as simple as this. If you have fully understood something, you will be able to communicate it easily and precisely. And if not, then there will only be confusion. For example, if you are in a garden and if you have to describe what you see, you will say, spring is in full bloom. You can see dahlias, roses and pansies. And if you aren't clear about what flowers are blooming, you will use abstract language instead of concrete expressions and say, spring is in full bloom. There are different flowers all around. Try not to be abstract. A radio text is enriched by the use of do words or verbs. To describe someone walking, you could say, he's moving on two feet or better still, walking, trudging, strolling. But adjectives often become problematic. Descriptive adjectives like blue, hard, hazy, dark help in forming an image in the mind of the reader. But if they are used to evaluate something, it might look like you are not letting the audience make an opinion but forming it for them. For example, you say, she was beautiful but was a bad girl. Now, you have imposed your opinion by using these adjectives. The audience might have otherwise not felt the person to be either beautiful or bad. 
sentences in active voices are more effective than those in passive voices. For example, film actor Rekha played a courtesan in Umrao Jaan is better than the film Umrao Jaan had Rekha playing a courtesan. Listeners don't like presenters waffling. When we speak without preparation, we tend to have many pauses, sound uncertain, and the listeners can almost hear us thinking of something to say. They hear all the um and ahs, and words like, basically, as I was saying, like, which can irritate them. So these fillers need to be avoided. Also, don't get into the trap of using flowery phrases. They might be totally wrong or unsuitable. Foreign words, scientific words, complicated words are a no-no for radio. Also, take care of how you deal with numbers on radio. Instead of a date, use yesterday, today, tomorrow. If you need to give time, instead of 10.28, say half past 10. With statistics like 3500 of the 10,100 respondents said, you might be better off saying one third of around 1000 respondents said. When describing a situation, try to create the atmosphere. Describe the sounds, the smells, the look of the place so that it comes alive in the eyes of the listener and the listener is almost transported to where the action is. Say if you are describing a cricket stadium, you talk about over 20,000 people packed in sweltering June, heat of Kolkata, awaiting in anticipation of a great game. Dressed in colours of the team or the country, singing, chanting, cheering, eating. That is you capture the sounds, sight and smell for the unseeing radio listener. The next stage comes when a well-written script has to be presented. If sentences are all in the same style, it will become boring. Therefore, it is a good idea to play with the way you construct your sentences so as to make it interesting. Always have neatly typed and spaced script which you read before you go on air so that you do not speak without knowing what you are going to speak. When we hear a good presenter on radio, we feel that he or she is a good speaker and are amazed at the fluency with which they usually pick up topics, move from one theme to the other. Most of us wonder how is it possible to do all this without a written script. Here we are wrong, the presenter doesn't sound as if he is reading the script, but he actually is. And this is what makes a good presenter. This can be achieved only if you can manage not to sound as if you are reading. It is rarely that the presenters are spontaneous. In fact, they are very well prepared. A good technique is to highlight words and phrases which you need to emphasize. The presenter knows where he has to take a pause for effect and also to breathe. Some presenters put marks on their strips which help them take pauses. Individual style, connecting different threads of the program and leading in from one topic to another when planned in advance sounds like music to the ears when it comes with practice. Sometimes, if you do not have the whole text ready, you can work with keywords which remind you of the way your script should flow. For example, heavy rain, muddy pools of water, traffic snarls, jams, getting late to work, mobile network down, horns blaring, tension. These words can help you describe a scene in a city where it is raining heavily. But it is not just a well-written script that works, you also need confidence to speak. People feel their pronunciation is not good or their voice is not for radio or they have an accent or they don't speak like some smart presenter they like. If you are confident, people will accept your diction, accent and mannerisms. You might be able to turn what you consider your weakness as your asset. Now that your script is ready, you have to remember you are addressing one person. You sit straight in front of the microphone, clear your throat and remember all those things you have just been told. Short sentences, pauses, pace your script, slow down or build the tempo as the script demands. Project your voice, avoid jargons, 
though you are on the radio and no one sees you, you can still use your arms for expression. You will deliver better and you will become more expressive too. A well-prepared presenter will make a success of his foray on air. A good way to prepare is to read your script loudly before going on air. Check pronunciations where you are not sure. Same goes with names and figures. Keep a steady pace. Don't mess your script with alterations and overwriting. If you fluff, move on unless it's a factual error which you need to correct immediately. Confidence is the key. We can sum up by saying we need to stress on seven P's. Pitch, pace, pause, projection, pronunciation, posture, personality. In India, since most radio is about music programming, let's talk about planning for a music show on radio. If you have more requests than you can play in the time slot allotted to your program, you will have to select the music you want to play. It also depends on what kind of music show it is. Pop, classical, top 20 or some other format. Sometimes, interesting requests help choose music because the presented notes reading the request will enthrall other listeners too. Think of the sequence. Order slow numbers followed by faster paced ones. Female vocals to male vocals, sad to happy songs. Presenters should try to prepare letters as we often find the letters are not legible and presenters stumble on air to listen to it. We must never talk over vocals. Do not criticize a listener's choice of music. Do not play less than a minute of anyone's request. If you are grouping requests, do present them in such a way that it doesn't sound like a roll call. Alternate between addressing general listeners and an individual listener. We now talk to Seema Chishti, senior radio broadcaster who is now an editor at the Indian Express on what she feels are the essential hallmarks of a good radio script. How is the radio script different from say a newspaper article? Well, sound, because there is no visual accompanying it, the, the audience cannot go back to it. So it has to be quite brief, clear, cogent and simple. Uh, the complexities that you attempt in a newspaper article or a magazine, you have to be much more careful with radio. Set up your arguments up front and move logically from one to the other. And be very cautious that uh, nobody is going to rewind on it. It's, you know, like a newspaper article, I can go back to a paragraph that confuses me. That option is not there in radio. What should you think of while writing for radio? There is a very good example given to uh, people who uh, learn write writing for radio, which is you need to actually sketch out what we call word pictures. So to try and make it as evocative, particularly now that you're in an era where people expect images, people expect a lot of glitz and glam, you know, all of that. So how to put that cleverly in the spoken word is a big challenge. And I think it's a very interesting and entertaining challenge because you can actually construct you sound carefully and write in a way that your sentences are short. They are quite explanatory. You don't use words like say million because that can get confused with a billion. So use a crore, use, use uh, things that don't require too much of you know, repetition that are not confusing. So I think the idea is to again keep it simple and keep it short. Short sentences are the most crucial. Who makes a good radio presenter? A good radio presenter has to be very clear, diction has to be good and uh, the accent need not be something that's distracting. So you don't need to have a very pakka British or a pakka American accent or a very, you know, that helps sometimes uh, in certain contexts but you need to be clear and you need to be somebody who's usually calm, especially if you're in a, in a, in a, uh, in a, break, in a breaking news or a, in a live scenario, you've got to be calm and uh, you should be sort of sound quite measured and dependable and it's a good thing to keep your frequency of your voice or rather the, the tone of your voice quite, uh, quite measured and centered. That does not distract the audience to start worrying about why this is so thin and squeaky or it's too baritone. Sometimes too beautiful a voice can also be distracting on radio. 
how important is the tone of presentation for effective communication? It's very important. It's a very important, um, the, sorry, it's a very important uh, ingredient. It may not be the most important, but if I was to deliver a very sad, new, sad bit of commentary or a very sober thing with a very ha ha, jolly kind of air, the way I'm speaking now, it completely distorts it. So you need to be able to adapt to various kinds of moods. Uh, which is where tone comes in because it communicates a lot what we call non-verbal communication and again you don't have graphics you don't have image you don't have uh, space you don't have the benefit of print of the reader going back to what you've written so you need to do everything vis-a-vis -vis sound and voice so I think tone is is quite important what tips would you give to a radio broadcaster I think first and foremost is a lot of uh, they need to be completely informed about what they're doing and be very clear themselves about what they're trying to do. And if it's just a plain straightforward broadcast then to be quite composed, to have some information and again not have too much information. So information overload is something with all audiovisual media you need to guard against. Uh, propose a format which is probably divided into two rather than trying to tell, you know, trying to show off your knowledge. The idea is not to just show off as to how much I know about you know what the Irish military or whatever the subject is but I know enough to communicate and also try and repeat things in the end so if you're communicating or broadcasting something or even say a show on old Hindi cinema or music try and come back to the main themes and sometimes perhaps to repeat messages so after every maybe uh, if it's a five minute radio broadcast if in the middle you could repeat the message that you started out with and in the end to recap stuff that may be quite informative and you may uh, end up being useful you could be extremely bright know a lot have a great voice and be a lousy broadcaster because you're just you know busy elaborating and showing off what you what you know rather than effectively communicating to the listener so I think a lot of practice makes that possible and get used to kind of rehearsing radio when we used to rehearse radio we felt lousy about doing it in an open uh, you know in, in a, alone in a room so request a friend a relative a husband a wife a mother a, a parent to just st stand there and pretend like you're talking uh, like I'm talking to you so it makes it much easier than if I was just answering questions reading off a script and uh, try and not read off scripts because however well you read something which is written it doesn't work very well so if you keep points that works much better so keep a powerpoint type kind of index cards where you keep things clipped but I think information preparation a bit of rehearsal and being calm presenting things calmly is what really works and short sentences <laughs> All this hard work of getting the language right and making it sound right can only work when it reaches the audience in the right way. So the production of radio program is as important as preparing for it. If it is in an interview being done in the studio, care has to be taken that the microphones are well placed and the sound levels are checked before the presenter goes ahead with the interview. If a feature is to be recorded, then all the sound effects Actualities and clips have to be placed sequentially for the person operating the studio to record. The studio has to be equipped to take in various sound sources from microphones, CDs, phone lines, ISDN lines and digital hard disks. While recording on location or in the studio, care has to be taken to use the right kind of microphone and make sure that the mic is at the right distance and there are no popping sounds. Also ensure you are facing the mic and that it is switched on. Usually in studio discussions, the guests tend to get so involved arguing with each other, rebutting and replying that they move away from the microphone and start addressing each other, often affecting the recording quality. A good studio manager has to keep ensuring that things are in order. While recording outside the studio, rattling of microphones and shaking of wires distort sound. So care has to be taken on how you are holding the microphone. While recording any sort of sound, one has to manage the recording level. Anything recorded at a high level will create distortions which cannot be corrected in the studios. Remember to always wear a headphone while recording. Recording in crowded places, press conferences and stadia all need special attention because sound levels and noise are often high and too many. Phone-ins suffer the most from bad quality phone lines, so most professional studios 
now use ISDN lines, integrated services digital network, which are capable of sending full quality stereo signals throughout the world. To get the best product on air, there has to be a studio discipline which needs to be maintained. Some things to take care of are Always wear a headphone in a studio. Keep silence near studios which have a red light on that indicates that a recording is in progress and the microphone is on. If you make a noise, it is likely to be recorded. If you need to get into an on-air studio, do it only if you get permission from the producer. Speak only when indicated by the presenter. Talkbacks help communication between the producer, studio, manager and the presenter. But messages should be short and make sure the presenter is not on air when you talk to him on the talkback. And always wear a headphone when in a studio so that you can hear the output and you can also be given instructions. Check every audio before you play. This is a rule which a good studio manager always follows even if he has been doing the same job for years. Let us now sum up on how we can evaluate the quality of a program on radio. We often talk of quality program, but let us figure out how we decide what makes for quality program. A criteria should be the appropriateness of a program. Did it meet the needs of those it was intended for? How creative was the program? Did it have delight and surprise along with the craft of communication? Was it enchanting and memorable rather than precise and mundane? Was it accurate? Was there truth, honesty and balance in the program? Did it have eminence? Did it have the best in the field which gave the program the authority and stature? Was it holistic? Did it not just appeal to the intellect but was pictorial, imaginative and nostalgic? Technically advanced programs still get admired by the audience and if it is a live show which shows technical wizardry, it is greatly appreciated. A program has to also be personally enhancing for the listener. It should add to the knowledge, provoke or give pleasure. The ultimate aim of a good program is that the program establishes a personal rapport with the audience. A distinctive program is hard to miss and it holds the audience too. Let us sum up what we mean by good radio by relating it to the six pips you hear of the Greenwich time signal. We can say the six pips stand for preparation, punctuality, presentation, personal rapport, punctilious to system and procedure. Professional. If you have prepared a crisp script with short sentences dealing with one idea per sentence, inactive voice which describes the smells, sounds and sights, then you are on the right track. Use the power of your voice to show the emotions you want to convey. Use pitch, punctuation and pauses to effectively communicate with your target audience. And remember, all will be well if you follow the studio etiquette and remember the importance of good production to make for effective radio. This is all we have for you in this episode. Thank you so much for listening. Have a good day and happy programming.